Let's take a look at how we can go about exporting or rendering down our completed project within DaVinci Resolve. Now the most simple way would be to come up to File, and then down towards the center we have Quick Export. That's going to bring up a pop-up menu where we can choose from a variety of different presets. Now while this is the quickest way to get our video exported, it will be a bit limited in what we can change for the settings for each of the presets. So as I go through these, some of the settings will change here. 265, the codec changes, of course. And then we have YouTube. The resolution is going to make use of your project settings for the resolution and the frame rate and these other settings. Now we do have the option to sign in directly to our YouTube account, as well as with Vimeo and the Twitter. So you have some flexibility with that if you'd like to upload directly to your online social media accounts or even the Dropbox. But we're going to cancel out of here and take a look at the second area where we can go about rendering down our video. And that will be to come to the deliver page, this last button here or last tab. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now on the left hand side, we have our render settings and we have a handful of presets up at the top and we'll come back to that in just a minute. We then have a preview window where we can check out our project just to double check things before we render it out. We have some clips. We have three clips in our project. We can see here's our one, two, and three clips. So we can select them down below or up above. Now we have our timeline and an important setting to pay attention to here is this is going to be our render setting. By default, it's going to be set to the entire timeline. Now what this means is that anything that's contained within this gray bar is going to be rendered down. Now I can come to the end and pull this point in and notice that this render setting then changes to the in out range, which is where we manually set these points. And as you can see, I'm click hold and dragging these, but I can also press I to set the endpoint on the QWERTY keyboard or O will set our out point. But if we'd like to change that back to the entire timeline, we can just click on the drop down menu and select that like so. And then finally, in the upper right corner, we have a jobs queue, which is empty right now because we haven't added anything. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, we start off on custom export by default. This is going to give us the most flexibility in choosing our settings. But before we take a look at those, let's go ahead and name our file. I'm just going to call this tutorial video. And this is just going to be the name that our outputted file or our render down file is going to have. Next, we need to choose a location and we would choose browse. By default, I believe that's going to be empty, but the desktop is just fine. So we'll choose save and leave that as so. We then have the option to render as a single clip or individual clips. By default, this is going to be on single and I'm going to leave that just as it is. And for our custom export, as I mentioned, this is going to provide us with the most options to choose from. Uh, so for video, you can see that we can choose our format. There's a ton to choose from there. We can choose our codec, whether 264 or 265, our encoder, our resolution, which is going to take on our project by default, our frame rate, and some quality settings at the bottom. We then have a tab for our audio, the data rate, and then we have some file settings. Let's come back to the video, and this is kind of an overview for our custom export. Now, as we saw with the quick menu, we also have some presets as well. So we could do a 264 master or 265 master or hyperdeck for 264. We have YouTube and clicking on the down arrow, we can choose from a variety of different resolutions. We have Vimeo. So clicking, we then switch the settings panel to match what we've selected up above. So choosing Twitter, it's going to change some of the settings here, TikTok. And if we continue to scroll over, we even have Dropbox, IMF, Final Cut, Premiere, and so on. But let's scroll back and take a look at the YouTube settings. And as we saw with the quick render window, we can also upload directly to YouTube by checking this box here if you've linked your accounts. And so with the YouTube selected, I'm just going to leave the default settings because it's pulling these from my project settings, and that's fine with me. 
And the next thing we need to do is add to the render queue. So we can go ahead and click that once and we can see that that's been added. Now you can go ahead and if you'd like to render down multiple outputs, multiple formats rather, then you can go ahead, make those selections, add them to the render queue and you can have a list here. And then once you are finished selecting all the formats that you'd like to render down, you can click on render all. Now I'm just doing the one, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then we're gonna have a rendering in progress readout, which is gonna tell us in minutes, the time remaining or hours if you've got a super intense project, and then our number of jobs here, just one of one for this video. If at any time we'd like to stop the render, then we can just click on the stop button here, but we'll just hang out for a minute and wait for this to render down. Okay, so we are nearly complete here. Two seconds remaining. And then if we minimize resolve, then we can see our tutorial video here on the desktop because that is what we named it up above here. And that is how we can go about rendering our video within resolve.